guys, it's Housewife and Heels, and I decided to do my shoe collection. This is going to be the second one that I'm doing. I found that over time I collect so many shoes that I think it would be reasonable for someone like myself to do a shoe collection video biannually. This could be a one-parter, this could be a two-parter, it just depends, but I thought it would be fun to kind of spend my new year <laughs> First and foremost, showing you guys everything I have in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoy it, or at least as much as I enjoyed making this video for you. But other than that, we're going to get right into it. We're going to start out with all my designer boots. I don't have a whole whopping amount of boots, <laughs> but I have them, so I thought it would be an easy way to organize the video. Now, I'm going to start out with Jimmy Choo. I have two pairs of Jimmy Choo boots. I like them both for different reasons. I have one ankle boot and one over the knee boot. I got them both at the outlets. If you're interested in the exact style, the ankle boots I have here are the Maggie. I really like them. I got them for about half off. And these are the Giselle. They're both a 120. And I don't believe they're available online anymore unless you happen to find them used. But Overall, I just think that Jimmy Choo is really good for boots in general. They're not terribly uncomfortable. The leather does break in the more you wear them. And they make 120 so that way you get that sky high heel, but they have a little bit or a larger platform depending on it. And it doesn't feel like you're walking around in 120. So they're easy to walk around in, they're comfortable. The leather is a good quality. Overall, I recommend a Jimmy Choo boot in general. Now, something that I have found a variation of going nuts on TikTok as of late is the Saint Laurent 68 boot, which these are. These are the original 68 boot, but they did a variation of these that was sort of a sock boot and it had little rhinestones or crystals throughout the entire shoe with the exception of the heel. Now, I don't have those, um, but these are very, very similar just with the box leather versus the mesh. So if anyone is interested in the Saint Laurent 68 boot, I have a video where I unbox these and I get more into the sizing. But other than that, these are fairly decent. I just caution you that these are a 110 millimeter, so they're not the most comfortable to walk around in all the time. So take note if you're interested in that boot. I don't believe the box leather is still available. I could be totally wrong about that. If I find it, I'll link it below. But I'm 99% certain that the, the sock boot is available. Now, my favorite boot in my collection thus far is the Stuart Weitzman Highland boot, minor and suede. These are always available on the site, and they also have them in just regular leather, and they come out in a multitude of colors. These are so easy to walk around in. They're very comfortable. Never really had an issue with these other than just them wanting to fall down. So I do find I have to kind of retie the strings in the back. But if that's my biggest complaint about a boot, then I'm very happy with them. And I was so happy with them that I managed to order a pair of the Ultra Highline boots in leather. The only difference between these and the boots I'm going to be getting is the height. They're going to be about four inches lengthier in the shaft of the boot. So I'm very excited to show you guys when I get those. And for anyone who is wondering, I will be doing a try-on of all of these shoes that I feature in this video. It's just going to be at the end of the video. So stay tuned, you'll get to see that. And now I'm going to be moving on to Christian Louboutin. Alright guys, I am here with my Christian Louboutin collection. It is quite an immense collection that I'm eternally grateful to have ever gotten my little paws on. But I'm going to go ahead and get right into it so that way this video doesn't take forever. And on we go. So if anyone asks me what I would recommend for a starter Louboutin, for most people, I would say a sandals. Now I would recommend, if I had to pick any, I don't have this exact shoe, which is weird that I recommend a shoe that I don't have, but I have something very similar. I would recommend the Somi Spikes in the 100s. I think those will be very forgiving for a starter Louboutin so you kind of can edge your way into the more risque or perhaps more dangerous footwear. So the closest thing I have to that, which are no longer available, otherwise I would recommend these, are the Methaldina Spikes. Just a simple little sandal with some punk rock detailing on 
the straps. Something very easy to wear. You can wear it with anything. And hello, Miss Beautiful. Don't mind the cats infiltrating. They do that. They just, they like to be a part of the show. Now, if you want something a little bit more risque, something that is always available, if you know you can handle a 120 height or something a little bit less than because these do have a slight platform, are the Chuckalucks. These are quite pricey. They retail at, I believe, $1,045, but oh boy, I think they're worth it. I definitely use them quite a bit. I love these. I wear them all the time. I love the spike detailing. I feel very secure in them. I'm not worried about wiggling and wobbling and falling down like I would in a usual 120. The Socate, which I do not recommend for a first shoe from Louis Vuitton at all. So many people, they go, they try out the black patent Socate. They think they look beautiful in them, which nine, to them, nine times out of ten they do. They go home. They have no idea what world they're <laughs> walking into and they begin to hate the shoe they just sit in the closet forever and never wear them and it was a waste of money or they just hate it they have to go and consign it or they try and take them back but because they already wore them out they cannot take them back so they either just then go to the consignment store or they just sit in their closet forever and the woman weeps <laughs> so I would not recommend a Soke for a starter Louboutin. I made that mistake and I sized it horribly. So if you're interested in Soke's or in all of my Soke's in general, I would either watch my Soke sizing guide or I would watch my Soke collection video. I go into way more depth with my Soke's in those videos. So if that's what you're interested in, go watch those. This is a whole collection video. I don't have time for that today. but. Onward, if the cat doesn't steal the show. I'm trying to save tiny speedy foe, you're not helping. Sorry if I gave you a whole lot of view of cat foot, but onward. Now, if someone is dying to get a pump from Louis Vuitton, they love the look of the Louis Vuitton pumps, I would recommend the Arizas. These are great. These are the most comfortable Louis Vuitton pump, which is why I have more than one pair. I would just absolutely adore them. These are not too, too old, so I haven't worn them too, too much, but these ones, obviously, have seen a lot more <laughs> times go now. And the leather is just easy to break in. I don't find I have too, too many issues in them. They can go with almost anything. You can wear them dressed up, dressed down. It doesn't matter. Just these are friendlier to people with average or wider feet, and they're even friendly to people with narrow feet like myself, so you really can't go wrong with those. Now, other popular pumps I've noticed are the Pugolpolis and the Hot Chick 100s. Now, if you're someone who is torn between these different styles of shoe, I would say go for either something you want to be more classic, more timeless, like the Pugolpolis, or if you want something a little bit more out there, a little bit more interesting as far as visuals go. The only difference is the scalloping and the hot chick. That's it. That's the only thing. So don't get into a big funk if you're one of those people that are torn between the two. Just if you want something to be more wearable or if you want something a little bit more fun. That's pretty much the only difference. Now for the final pair of shoes, I have the new Great Creepy 100s. This particular height is no longer available. They do have them in the 120. I hope to acquire them in the 120 one day, particularly in the grade, which goes from black to red. But if I don't get it, I'll live. And for the new very Privé, if anyone is interested in those, I don't recommend them as a starter Louboutin. I don't, they are actually quite painful. So other than that, I think that will about do it for all of my Louboutins. I love them all in their each in different ways but other than that I will get into Jimmy Choo for you guys and we will go from there. All right guys I am here with the Jimmy Choo's that I have with the exception of the boots that I talked about earlier so let's get right into it. These are the Anooks. These are very very similar to the Christian Louboutin Socates like you recently saw. However, if I had to pick between these and the Socates, I will go for the Socate nine times out of ten. I find that if you're someone who is really hard up about having their shoe last and last and last, then these are going to be it because the leather is, ins is insanely thick and 
and this poses a comfort issue. If you ever heard of people's feet going numb and so cakes, your feet will go numb a lot quicker and a lot worse anyways while you're breaking them in. So, heads up. Now, these, <sighs> these are arguably my least favorite shoes in my entire collection. I haven't had a chance to get rid of these. If you are in the market for a pair of Jimmy Choo's, avoid the Jimmy Choo Lou at all costs. It's a pretty shoe, but there's absolutely no give in this sort of wire mesh material in um, the toe of the shoe. So bear that in mind. There, there's just no give. It's awful. I do not recommend this shoe. It's just here for information purposes, education purposes. Now, a shoe that I recently featured in my Crystal Embellished Shoe Collection video is the Bing. These are one of the most popular Jimmy Choo's available right now. Now, mine were a limited edition because they come with little pearl accents on the strap of the mule, but they make these in so many different variations, so many different colors, so many different materials. I've recently seen them in Plexi. And these, my only complaint about them is that this particular style of mule can look a little bit awkward when wearing them in pants. I'm sure you'll see that in my try on. But other than that, these are a pretty decent little shoe. And I would recommend these to most people if there's someone who really, really likes to wear dresses and skirts. Now, something I love about Jimmy Choo, sort of similar to the Louboutin Choco Lux that I mentioned a little bit earlier, is that these have a slidey platform when they make a sandal in the 120 height. Now, this is just a variation of a design that Jimmy Choo does often. This sort of 120 slidey pump, the little ankle strap, and then some sort of decorative feature in the actual toe of the shoe. Now, these were also featured in my Crystal Embellished shoe collection video because they have little hot fix stones on the little bow in the front of the shoe, which I think is really cute. And these were my first crystal, crystal embellished shoes in general. But Jimmy Choo, I do for the most part recommend as a designer. I think he does kind of have his hits and misses, but I will definitely continue to buy Jimmy Choo's. I bought a pair of boots from them not too long ago, so I'm definitely still a fan. And other than that, I think we are going to get into my Renee Calvillas. So I will see you again. I am here with my Renee Calvillas, and these are arguably some of my most blingtastic shoes in my collection. I recently did a crystal embellished shoe video, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, and these, the Margos were featured in them because I mean look at that sole. The Swarovski sole alone is nuts. Now when basically the whole shoe is done up is wild. So if you're someone who really likes the bling 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 and more bling on top of it, Renee Calvilla is there for you. I'm hoping to get my third pair, the Chandelier shoes, but it just it depends on what I can do, what I can get. But I very, very recently, from another generous subscriber, got me the Galaxia shoes that were on sale. So, of course, I had to go and peek, and that's how I found out the chandeliers in this color were on sale, because I'm psycho, and the shoes I have are never enough. I'm always searching for more. But these are currently on sale. These are currently available and on sale on the Renee Cavallo site. If you're interested, these are the Galaxias. These are insane. There are nearly 1,500 stones on each shoe. And I know that it's been kind of trendy, this sort of mesh, glittery sock thing they have going on, just in general. I talked about earlier the St. Laurent 68 boots having something very similar available. And as you'll see in the trial, these are quite beautiful, definitely an occasion-worthy shoe like the New Year. Valentine's Day coming up, especially in this color. I didn't even think about that. Um, but other than that, these are pretty comfortable for the most part. I haven't had a chance to wear them out and about too, too much, but during the try-ons or just wearing them at home, showing them off, <laughs> um, I didn't have too, too many issues with them. But I will go ahead and carry on and 
since I've already been talking about glittery shoes, I might as well go into some of my other glittery or star-studded ones, whatever you want to call it, my vanilla blondics. So I will see you with those. All right, guys, I am here with my vanilla blondics. I have three pairs. Two of them are absolutely stunning, and one of them is the utmost in practicality. So these three I love for completely different reasons. And I'm going to get started with the Lorem. Now, if you want a shoe for a very, very formal event, look no further. I haven't had a chance to actually wear these out yet, but I'm hoping that maybe on know, Valentine's Day or something like that, I can actually go out to like a nice dinner or something. Or, I don't know, but if there's ever an event where I have to get really, really, really dressed up, I will look no further. Done. Just these are, whew, these, I don't care what you're wearing them with, if you wear them with anything, people are just going to be looking straight at your shoes. These are definitely a sight to behold, and not for the faint of heart. These are if you want the attention to be on your feet. Now, for something that is very practical, so comfortable, I featured these in my Best of 2022 video. These are the BB pumps. So simple, so classic, timeless. I can wear them doing almost anything short of taking a hike. <laughs> these I love to bits. I've seen them at the outlet, so you can get them on sale. They're not something that you just have to break down and pay, I think, like the 700 or something that they were, if I remember right. But totally recommend. I will wear these to death. I have already worn them to death, and I will continue to wear them to death. So one of my favorite pairs, I will never get rid of them unless I know I can replace them. And now, one of my most sentimental pairs, something that was given to me by a very generous subscriber, are my... And Yeezys. I know everyone talks about these. Everyone has a pair. These I would have gotten married in if I had them for my wedding or if I had the money to get them when I was getting married. And my finances were very different at that time. But man, if I had the money, I would have done it. If I ever do a vow renewal, if I, I don't know, if I ever go on like a second honeymoon or something, then these are coming along. I will wear them done deal. These are great if you are a bride. These are great even just going to a wedding. These I've even worn to places like the grocery store. <laughs> these I will have until the end of time. I absolutely love them. My only issue I've ever had with them is that they are very, 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 very delicate. So if you are going to fork out the, I think it's over a thousand dollars for these now, then I would caution, spray them with some sort of satin protectant and be very careful when you do wear them because you just want to wear them all over and the more you wear something, the more prone it is to damage. But other than that, I love my Manolos. I will continue to purchase Manolos. But now I'm going to get into something way more dangerous, the Cassidy Blades. All right, guys, I am here with my Cassidy Blades. I only have two pairs, but that's okay because these are just a great great purchase if you're looking for a statement shoe without getting something quite as mainstream as the Louboutin and from the front these look fairly I don't know ordinary but then BAM you get a shank like these it could probably cause physical harm to somebody so if you want something that's gonna look really really edgy then these I would recommend in a way they're edgy yet timeless they're modern without like trying too hard, I just cannot get over them. And they are initially a little bit tough to break in, but once you do, they mold around your foot very well and they can become quite comfortable. So I would recommend getting the black calf leather as a first pair of blades if the, that is something you're looking into. I do have a pair in LaCroix Gray. These are an example of what you can get if you go a little bit outside the box and if you take advantage of their biannual sales around summertime and around this time of year, now that I think about it. But these I got half off. So if you want a pair of blades, but you don't know if you want to shell out the, I think it's like 750, 800 they cost nowadays, then have no fear. You can easily get something 
something on sale. But that's pretty much all I have to say about these. These are fantastic. I will not get rid of them and I'm going to be moving on into Saint Laurent. Alright guys, I am here with my Saint Laurent shoes and I have two pairs. One of them popular, the other I managed to just find at the outlet and I thought they looked cool. So the popular ones are my LA 16 mules. These are always available, granted not in this color. This color is no longer available, but these are a very popular mule. I have seen different variations of these, different fabrics, materials, and different designs, but these are actually quite comfortable. I would recommend these for someone who is looking for a mule, but other than that, I have the Venus 110 pumps. These are my first and only sling bags in my whole collection of these. They give me sort of 1950s Salvatore Ferragamo type vibes and that's something that I appreciated about them. These are no longer available but they very very often do sort of a vintage-esque vibe so if you like sort of the style I'm sure there is something similar out there available. Now I haven't worn these shoes too too much but <clears throat> Saint Laurent does make a good product, it just, it can be kind of wishy-washy on the comfort, the wearability, but if I had to recommend any to anybody, the LA 16 mules would be where it's at. Now I'm going to show you my Jumpy Torasis. Alright, I am here with my Jumpy Torasis shoes, I only have two pairs, but I quite like the brand so far from the experience that I've had in them. You might be most familiar with the Plexi pumps that they came out with, I want to say probably around 10 years ago, the, plus, the Plexi pumps became popular and they've never really quite left in the fashion world. They never really got cycled out. So these have been interesting for me to try out. These were given to me by one of my subscribers and they were bought pre-loved. So they were my first ever pre-loved pair of shoes. So that has been an interesting endeavor, but I can say after checking these out for a bit that with wear and tear, the toe box of the shoe will kind of curve upward. So I don't know if that's just an issue with Jumpy Torasi shoes in general, or if that has to do with the plexi material kind of giving way as you wear them in. I don't have too, too much experience in these, but I might actually break down and get a new pair so that way I can compare and contrast between used and pre-loved shoes versus new. Now something that I did get new from Jumpy Torasi not too too long ago are these sandals. These are the Manhattan sandals. And these if you can't quite tell come in sort of a like leopard print but it's a very muted down leopard print. It's not in your face leopard print like a lot of shoes can be. They, they can really go with anything. They're not in your face, out there, loud. They're they're very calm down. So these I would definitely wear as sort of like a neutral sandal. I'm excited for when the weather warms up so I can wear them and give them more sort of a review that they deserve. But other than that, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Jumpy Torasi for the most part since I don't have too too much experience in them. And now I'm gonna be getting into a bunch of different brands of shoes that I only have single pairs of from each brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into that and I will see you with those. Okay, so I'm here with my last batch of shoes. These are all from different designers. I have Valentino, I have Stuart Weitzman, I have Gucci, Philip Klein, and Aquazura all sitting here. These are the only shoes I have from each of those brands with the exception of Stuart Weitzman because I have a boot but obviously a boot would be a little bit <laughs> difficult to set at the table with the sandals, so I do make do. But I will get into each one and if I am interested in different shoes from each brand. Now, the Valentino Roxette pumps. These were in my Best of 2022 video. These I absolutely love. They're so comfortable. They're easy to wear with just about anything. You can dress them up, down, all around. It does not matter. These. I love to death and these whenever I talk about them I mention with every video is that you can find these on sale you don't have to pay like 1100 plus dollars for a pair of rock studs you can get them on sale it is possible in fact they're on sale at Lula La right now so 
I would strongly recommend just wait until you can find them on sale. Sign up for Marula Love's emails. Eventually they'll go on sale. You'll see them and you'll save at least a couple hundred bucks. So you're welcome for those interested. Now I am interested in other Valentino shoes, but a lot of other kinds you probably aren't going to find on sale. Like I believe there's a pair of 120 sandals I saw with sort of like a fishnet material and studs, but oh boy are they expensive and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them. But I digress, I will carry on. Now, Stuart Weitzman is another brand that you can regularly find on sale. I find the Stuart Weitzman everything on sale. You never, ever, ever, ever have to pay full price for these. Don't do it. You can find practically any shoe from them on sale. Now, I said earlier that I'm going to be getting some Ultra Highlands from Stuart Weitzman here in probably the next week or so. If I had to wager a guess, I have to check tracking on that. But if I was interested in any shoe, it would be The Nudist. Not The Nudist Curve, not The Nudist Song, The Nudist. I believe they are a 115 sandal, so if anyone can lead me down the Stuart Weitzman Nudist path, I would greatly appreciate it because I've gone to different stores, I have called customer service, I cannot find these shoes to save my life. So it is very upsetting to me. But other than that, I caution you, don't ever pay, pay full price for Stuart Weitzman's ever, unless you're looking for the nudist and you might just have to. But carrying on, Gucci, these are my only wedges I have in my collection. Now I hope to get more in the future, but for now these will do it for me. These I have worn out and about to the beach, these I can wear out on a boat like if I'm going fishing or something because nothing says practical <laughs> footwear for fishing quite like Gucci espadrilles, right? But these I love. I will have them forever and ever and ever. These are pretty timeless. Can't go wrong with them. The next wedges I'd like to get would be either the Louboutin Maffel Dina wedges. Oh, I forget for the life of me what they're called. Um, and they also have a pair of wedges I believe called the Choka Zeppa. I could be totally wrong, but I'm very interested in those as far as a wedge is concerned for when the weather does get better. But moving on, Philip Klein, he is known for doing very, very, very punk rock shoes. And look at this little heel, the little skull. It, like that's definitely more so of an, of a punk rock vibe. I sort of get like British 80s punk from his aesthetic. He has a tendency to do 120 heels as well. I don't have any of those from him because even at the outlet, they're nutsy expensive. But I look forward to trying out more Philip Klein. I don't know too, too much about the brand other than that. So we're gonna go into our final pair of shoes. These are the Aquazura Supermodel sandals. Very, very strappy. Something I like about these is that you can adjust most of the straps to either make them tighter or looser depending on your foot. And these are very comfortable overall. I managed to find these at the Saks Off Fifth outlet, I want to say over a year ago now, which is wild to me. But these have treated me very well for the most part. And I'm looking forward to trying different shoes from Aquazora. The ones I want to try the most would be the tequila sandal. I don't have them here with me, unfortunately, but if I ever get lucky enough to be able to acquire a pair of tequila sandals, that would be great. But overall, my experience with Aquazora is that they stay very true to the reputation of being quite a comfortable shoe. But now I know a lot of you have been waiting for the try-on, so that's what we will get into now. So thank you guys for watching. If you are here with me thus far, I hope you guys had a great new year and continue to have a great year. So, other than that, I definitely had a pretty good shoe year and I hope you guys do too. So, I will let you enjoy the try-ons. I will see you in the next one. Bye! This is where I give my little commentary on either each individual shoe or how to save money on them. These are a prime example of checking out the department store outlets like Neiman Marcus Last Call, Saks Off Fifth, or anything of the sort. These I managed to find for a little over $300. They retailed for $8.95. So go check out your outlets. You don't know what you can find. Now these are an example of what you can find at a standalone outlet. That meaning I found these at a Jimmy Choo 
outlet. All they had was Jimmy Choo shoes. It was just like a regular Jimmy Choo boutique, but it was an outlet. So these I found for a little over 300 and they retailed for well over a thousand. So if you live anywhere by a Jimmy Choo outlet, which I know there are several across the country, go ahead and check them out or just outlets in general. You don't know what you can find. Now these, once again, outlet find. I found it, managed to find these at Neiman Marcus last call. I saw them, they only had one pair and I said sold. They happened to fit me like a glove and I'm so happy I got them because I remember these being wildly popular when they first came out. Did I have to get them a season or two after they were popular? Yeah. But do I mind? No, because they look beautiful and I will wear them for years to come. Now these are my latest outlet find in general. These I found at another Jimmy Choo outlet and these I paid a little over 500 for and they retailed for a little over a thousand. So I was still very happy even though that's more than what I typically would pay but these are boots so you have to keep in mind you're going to pay more for boots. You're not going to find as screaming a deals as I just mentioned earlier all the time. So. Just take what you can get, especially when you're trying out something new, like these platforms. I don't have many platforms in my collection, so this was a fun little score for me. Oh, my Socades. These were not an outlet find, but I love them anyway. I paid full price for them at a regular Christian Louboutin boutique. My only regret is that I did not size them correctly. I thought that going to my true to size would work out for these, but it did not. Turns out my true to size is too big for a so Kate. Who would have thought that was actually a thing? These once again, I went true to size because I did not know any better. I am actually a 35 and a half in so Kate's when my true to size is 36, so if you are going to be buying so Kate's, I think I said this before, but go and check out my sizing video so that way you don't get, I get, for lack of a better term, screwed out of a pair of sew kits that can fit you, especially when they're $800 a pop. So please watch that so you actually know what size to get so your foot doesn't fly out of the shoe. Now these are an example that, yes, you can find brand new sew kits on sale at Louboutin Boutiques. Now there's only one actual Louboutin outlet where I have seen sew kits but these just came from a regular standalone boutique, not an outlet. Now, biannually, if you sign up for their emails, they will send you a list of everything on sale. So, even if you don't live by a boutique, you can call the store and say, I know y'all sent me this sale, these are what I want at this price, and send them to me. And they will. So, you do not have to pay full price for the limited edition seasonal shoes. Food for thought. Pro tip, I got 40% off these. Now these were a gift. I did not pay for them at all, but I am so happy I got them because who doesn't love a true red shoe all over, front to back, sole to tip. These are just gorgeous and I am currently in the process of breaking them in, which does take time, but it's going to be so worth it when I can go out in my red all over shoes. These are just ugh, delicious cherry red. I wish they were more practical so that way I can wear them everywhere, but I will wear them wherever I can. Maybe if I go see a movie or something, who knows. But love these to bits. Oh, my original Socates. These are actually not my original Socates because my original ones, I got a whole size too big. Instead of a half size, I went up a whole size not knowing any better and just listening to the sales rep. So, once again, these are an example of don't listen to your sales rep, listen to me, because I think I know better because the sales rep screwed me. <laughs> now I have a pair of sew gates just sitting around that I have to either consign or give away, who knows, but I don't want that to happen to you. Listen to someone who spends all their money on these rather than just sells them and says, oh yeah, you're half size up, no problem, sold by. Now these are my Erizas, one of my favorite Louboutins. These were a gift and I'm very happy that I got these because I find these to be very comfortable. I know that these can be a bit of a controversial shoe in ways of comfort, but for my narrow feeted people, these are highly comfortable in comparison to the rest of the pumps. I have heard really good reviews from people with wider feet or even just average feet as well. So I do recommend these for a starter pump if that is what you're looking for.
Now these are another example of shoes that I found at the Christian Louboutin outlet. As far as I'm aware, there's only one in the world in Cabazon, California. And I'm fortunate enough to live by there. So these I managed to get for 40% off. And I'm so happy I managed to find them because look how pretty they are. So it's very rare for me to pay full price for a seasonal product when I am fortunate enough to live by a store that will sell them about a year or two after season. <laughs> so I guess I'm just lucky. But you can find seasonal stuff at outlets like Neiman Marcus Last Call if you look hard enough. So pay attention. Become your own personal shopper. Now these are a testament to my love of Rue La La. Rue La La will send you emails saying, oh, we're going to have Christian Louboutin on sale, and these were part of a sale like that. So instead of paying, I believe it was $900 originally for these, I only paid $699. So it was a couple hundred dollars savings, and that I really like. So definitely sign up for Rue La La. This is not sponsored. I wish they would sponsor me. So Rue La La, if you're watching, sponsor me, please. <laughs> I'll mention you all the time. Now these are my Pigolfelis, these I also found at the Louboutin outlet, and these are quite fun. So if you go and look for those seasonal shoes, you can find the most fun footwear imaginable. Now you can't really get your heart set on a particular shoe when you do that, but the savings is definitely worthwhile. It's definitely something to look into. I got these for 40% off as well, and I love them to bits. I will never get rid of them just because they're so unique. Now these are my Newberry Privés, also an outlet find. It's a little bit rare to find the traditional black or the nude colors, but it is possible to find them at outlets. I noticed that Neiman Marcus Last Call has a tendency to get Socates all the time, but I do know that they usually come in very large sizes, so if you're someone who wears like an 8, 9, 10, or somewhere in that vicinity, then please check out your outlets. This is probably just going to be a, a call to go to the outlets in this whole commentary, but that's okay, because I love outlets and I recommend them. These were definitely not an outlet find. These are something that I just had to have when I saw them. I went to Louboutin for, I believe, the second or third time in my life when I saw these, and I couldn't quite get them then. But I went back when I had the money and I got them. These were $1,045 and I think they're worth every penny because I think I mentioned before, I wear them all the time. They're beautiful. You're... If you do find these at an outlet, can you please send them to me? <laughs> but if I ever would find them at an outlet, I'd probably get a second pair because I know I'm going to wear these to death. Certain shoes are worth the splurge. These, I think, are an example of that. These were also worth the splurge. Now, these are no longer available, as I mentioned earlier, but a comparable shoe would be the So Me, which is always available. It's a very similar style, just that delicate little strappy sandal with all the little studs and spikes, whatever you want to call them. One day I might get the So Me, we shall see, but for the time being, these are just going to have to make do, which is fine because I love them, and I honestly kind of like the look of these better. I wish they would have kept these around for someone who likes the more dramatic effect of the larger spikes. So Louboutin, please bring them back. I love them. I recommend them. <laughs> Now we're into Jimmy Choo. These are my Anooks. I don't wear these too, too often because I honestly prefer the Socate, hence why I have like five of them and only one of these. But these I still really like. If you're someone who really, really, really wants their shoes to last a lifetime, then I would say get these if you're in the market for a 120. They do not bend. They do not break. They hold up. They stay in shape. But I caution you, they're painful because they're so sturdy. So heads up. Now these are my Jimmy Chulus. Ugh. These are quite painful to wear. I wish that I I wish they weren't so painful because they actually look quite pretty, but I do not recommend anyone get these at an outlet or not. I know I seen these at outlets just because they did so poorly. I thought I could squeeze my foot into a six. I was wrong, and honestly I believe a 36 and a half would have been just too big, so these are just a bad idea. These are not a bad idea. These I found at an outlet. They're always coming out with very, very similar structure shoes to these. So you can find something very similar. I believe I mentioned it earlier, but the Rosie is very similar. That is currently available. So 
These you can definitely get away with wearing, I don't know, wherever you want. I've even worn them just casually out and about shopping. So just keep on the lookout. If you really like something, you can find something very similar from your designers nine times out of ten. Now these are my Jimmy Choo Bings. Now these are an example of being able to find something on sale as a gift for someone. My husband went to the actual Jimmy Choo retailer and he managed to find these for 40% off and I think he did a pretty good job because the Bings are a little bit difficult to find on sale when they look just like the traditional ones with the exception of a slight change in the accents on the strap. So. If you're not super, super picky, you can definitely find even the classic or super popular shoes on sale as well. Now these were not found on sale. These were a gift that I know were paid for in full price. These are absolutely exquisite. I just adore these. I wish I could get them in every color, but I know that's not <laughs> totally living in reality unless I had loads and loads of money, which unfortunately I don't, otherwise I would be showing you probably at least 10 versions of these. But sometimes it's worth a splurge, I will say that here and there, and these are no exception, however I know you can find different variations of these on sale if you pay attention. Now these were found on sale. These originally retailed for $1,800 and someone bought these for me, but they were on sale. I believe they paid $1,280 if memory serves me correctly. And these were quite the generous gift either way. And I'm still just blown away at how sparkly they are and how beautiful they are. And retail wise, these are now the priciest shoes in my collection. These are no joke, but check out ReneeCavella.com. They are still available as of having uploaded this video, so I strongly encourage you to go check out their sales if you're interested in the designer but are not interested in paying full price. Now these are my Manolos. These were a generous gift to me. Definitely probably high shinier than my Renee Calvillas, but so so beautiful in a very different way. These are definitely very formal wear type bedazzling shoes. I'm probably gonna wind up wearing these to a wedding or something or maybe if my husband decides to take me out on a very nice dinner knock on wood but <laughs> either way I'll find somewhere to wear these. I don't know where yet because they're very delicate they're sort of like this dainty fragile satin with these beautiful crystal overlays and I'm just at a loss as to how can I wear these shoes out so people who know to style them help me out in the comments please now these are one of my favorites in my collection period these are my Manolo Blahnik Kangeezies I first saw the blue version of these in the Sex and the City movie I say that every time I talk about them and I know everyone who has them talks about it whenever they show them off but these are just delicious. I feel like they're timeless. They'll never go out of style. And you can find versions of these on sale. These were a gift to me, so I didn't get them on sale, nor did the person who bought them. But you can find different variations, different colors, different patterns. They make a million in one of these. So you too can find these on sale. Don't pay full price if you don't have to. That's probably the number one thing I'm going to screech during this little voiceover, is don't pay full price. These definitely don't pay full price. These I didn't. I found these at the Neiman Marcus outlet. I have seen these at the outlets numerous times. I don't know why they're at the outlets because they're such a great shoe. The Manola Blahnik BB pumps are one of my most comfortable. I mentioned these in my top shoes of 2022. They're very basic. <laughs> I, I don't really like calling them that, but that's what they are. So simple, yet timeless, elegant, can be dressed up, can be dressed down, it does not matter. I will wear these until either them or I die. Now we're into my Cassidy blades. Now unfortunately these can be very, very difficult to find in the US in general. Now these were a gift, and oh, they're just so beautiful, so I think I said this before, but if you want something that's a statement piece that isn't necessarily a Louboutin, which I know can feel a little bit mainstream from time to time, 
These are awesome and they're slightly easier to walk in than a Socate if you want that super super high heel pitch but you don't necessarily want to feel like you're walking in that high of a heel pitch which most of us do not. So if you like that dramatic sort of piece definitely get these. Now these are a version that I got on sale. These were half off, so don't pay the seven to eight hundred that you typically see blades going for. I would strongly recommend checking out their biannual sales, similar to Louboutin. They have their sales twice a year, once during the summertime, once during the wintertime. I check them out here and there, but I'm pretty happy with my blade collection. I would just like to get either a boot or a sandal, because the boots look pretty cool too. But I'm not super actively on the hunt, but if you are, check out their sites. They might even have them on sale right now for all I know. And typically their sales last for at least a month, so go check that out. Now these are my Saint Laurent Venus Slingbacks. I managed to find these at the Saint Laurent outlet at an outlet mall that I live fairly close to. So be on the lookout wherever you live. I would Google closest outlet mall near me. You can find so many different retailers that have great prices on their goods. I've seen Gucci, obviously Saint Laurent, Burberry, a lots and lots of standalone outlet stores that you would not think that these designers have. So do your research, check it out, you never know what you can find. These are another example of something that I got at the Saint Laurent outlet. Now these are the LA 16 Mules, which are very popular. They're on their website to this day, just not in this particular color. The only reason why these were even at the outlet is because the color was being discontinued. So I saw these, I happened to like the color, and I snapped them up. And these typically go for, I believe, seven, eight hundred dollars, and I got these for three hundred. So I know this is sort of like my ode to outlets, but I cannot stress it enough. Go check them out. Save your money. Don't pay top dollar if you don't have to. These were actually a gift. And speaking of outlets, luckily for me, I live by a Gian Vito Rossi standalone outlet, and I might actually break down and get my first pair of plexi pumps that weren't pre-loved. These were pre-loved, which is fine. People do often sell their old shoes. I mean, I'm no exception. So I thought it was interesting to be sent a pair that had already had someone who owned them before. So that was fun, but now I think I'm ready to actually get my first pair of new plexi pumps and try those out. Now these are my John Vito Rossi Manhattan sandals, and these are also an example of what you could find in an outlet. I cannot preach enough how much I love outlets. I'm pretty sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk about them, but I will not stop because I cannot stress how important they are if you want to save money on these designer luxury goods. Now I. I love designer shoes, but I love saving money more, even if it's not the trendiest shoe or something that's currently in fashion. I don't care because I'm going to have these shoes for way longer than when they're in fashion. So keep that in mind. If you want these shoes to last a lifetime, don't be so picky about what's on trend now. Another example of something that you can find on sale at the regular standalone store. This was not found at the outlet, this was at a regular Stuart Weitzman. These were 40% off. Now, one of the easiest designers that you can get on sale is Stuart Weitzman. His stuff is always, always, always on sale. I have never paid full price for any of his shoes, and I won't unless it's the nudist sandal, which is almost impossible to find and can usually only be found on a celebrity. But I will find them one day, I just have to be vigilant and persistent. So. Another lesson I'd like to give you is persistence. If you persevere, it will pay off. With these Philip Pline sandals, I'm going to talk about how you can get discounts on discounts at the outlet. So at the outlets, they'll usually have the initial markdown by a couple hundred dollars, and then just to sweeten the pot, what they'll do is they will lower the cost again by, say, another 30, 40, 50 percent, sometimes you'll even see 60, which is crazy, or if it's on clearance, what they'll do is they'll mark it down even further just to try and hawk the item out. So pay attention, go to the outlet, don't pick out the first thing you see, actually take the time, look at the signs, look at the sales. 
these were not an outlet find. I just really needed some wedges for a wedding because I was specifically told you can't wear stilettos. So much to my dismay, I found the good and an excuse to go get my first espadrilles. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. And I'm quite happy because I needed a beach heel. Like, who am I housewife in heels without a heel that she can wear to the beach? So, that's what I did, and I hope to eventually get more espadrilles with the summer months eventually coming up. These are my Valentino rock studs, and these are just the perfect storm of finding a popular, trendy shoe at the outlet, which is super comfortable and you can wear with almost anything dressed up, down, all around, it does not matter. These typically retail for $1,150. I picked these up for $660. That is a lot for me to spend on a pair of shoes, but when they're as coveted as the rock studs, I felt it was worth it, and I have definitely gotten my cost per wear out of these. I will wear them until they fall apart. So these are truly a testament to the things that you can find at outlets. It's not always things that are out of style. Sometimes things just show up. Now, finally, I have my Aquazora Supermodel sandals. But for the most part, there isn't too much to get into about these. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching up until the end of this video or just watching me from either the beginning or right now. Just thank you, thank you so much to everyone who watches, people who subscribe, people who have actually sent me stuff, which I'm so eternally grateful for. So I hope you guys had a happy New Year's Day and I hope you continue to have a great new year. So that's it for now and for sure i will see you guys in the next pair of shoes bye